Hello, and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we're going to discuss numeric and date validation tests in SQL Server. Numeric value data validation tests use simple field level logic. There are six examples in this rule set, and we're going to get started with not null right now. To get started, open up a browser, set the URL to github.com slash data research labs, all one word. Find and click the project SQL scripts. There, there. Scroll down till you find data validation scripts. Click that. And scroll down till you find SQL Server. And we're going to look at rule set number four, numeric val values. So click that. And here we are. There are six different test cases that we're going to look at. So let's get started. The test case number 10, not null. This is just a simple case of selecting from a demo HR countries where the region ID is null. And when the count is greater than zero because something exists that's null, the test case has failed, otherwise it's a pass. Next is test case number 11. We want to check and ensure that there's no negative numbers. So just like the not null, we're going to select from demo HR countries. And if the region ID is less than zero and there's a count of more than one of those, then fail the test case. Moving along, test case number 12, numeric range. Maybe we want to make sure that uh, in the demo HR employees, that the employee ID is never less than 100 or greater than or equal to 1,000. So what we would do here is wrap it in an inner query that says, hey, if the employee ID is less than 100, pop a rejection code 01. I'm expecting uh, greater than 99, but it's less, and here's the actual value. And then likewise, if it's over greater than or equal to 1,000, rejection code 2 is popped. And so you have this returning employee ID and a status code, and then the outer wrapper is saying, hey, nothing should be returned here that is uh, unequal to P. And moving along, let's go to test case 13. Here we're looking at checking if a numeric value is inside of a list. Specifically, demo HR countries table is the region ID not in the values 1, 2, 3, 4. If it's not in 1, 2, 3, 4, it's going to pop a fail on each row. The outer query says, hey, if any of these 100 inner rows, 1,000 inner rows, aren't a pass, meaning it's a fail, then the count is greater than zero, so pop a fail. And like, uh, notice that the test case is, hey, ensure that the value is in the list. But down here, we're saying, hey, pop an error if it's not in the list. They're opposites. When we go to not in, it's the same thing. Check that the value is not in a list. Okay, well, if it is in the list of 97, 98, 99, pop a fail. Other than that, this is the same as the in list we just inverted. And finally, a multi-field compare. We want to verify that the numeric field values in a table or in multiple tables in relation to one another. So in this example, we're going to verify the salary times the commission percent is always less than 10,000 in the table employees. Here I've brought up SQL Server Management Studio. I'm looking at test case 15 that we we're just looking at. Let's run the inner query. And you can see all the rows. Huh, the commission percent is null on a lot of them. Some of them, that's probably because they're not salespeople. And then some of them do have a commission percent. And they're all passes. That's what the inner query does. The outer query is going to collapse that all down into a single row. And since they're all passes, or null, I guess they're all passes. Since they're all passes, the count of not equal to a pass, that count is going to be zero. Since it's zero, we're going to get a pass. So we run it and we get one P. Next up, rule set number five, date values. So date value data, data validation tests also use simple field level logic, similar to the numeric test we just saw. There's five examples in this rule set that we're going to get started with right now. In GitHub, we're going to click rule set number five on the SQL Server block of links. And we're going to walk through <clears throat> not null date range, no time part, has a time part, multiple field compare, and a bonus tip on joining tables with two pairs of start and end date overlaps. So test case number 16. We want to verify that the date field is not null. So demo HR countries. We're going to show the date last updated, and our business logic says case when the date last updated is null, then fail, else pass. Test case number 17. We actually want to look at uh, whether or not a date is within a specified date range, upper and lower bound. So in this case, again, demo HR countries, and we are going to show what the date last updated time is. So our business logic 
is going to check and make sure that the date last updated is never greater than right now because it can't be in the future. <clears throat> and it's also going to make sure the date last updated is never less than January 1st of this year. And since it's a case when else, if this condition is met and it's not rejected, and if this condition is met and it's not rejected, then it's going to get a P, a pass. And it's going to run for all the rows in the demo HR countries. If, they, if any of these are not a pass, then the outer query is going to pick it up, the count will be greater than zero, and the whole thing will fail. Moving along to the no time part. And to show this in SQL Server Management Studio, we can run the inner SQL to give you a visual. And you see the date last updated is all run through there. And then the status is pass on everything as I scroll down. So the outer query is, of course, going to be a pass. Moving along to test case number 18, making sure that there's no time part. So what we're doing here is uh, demo HR employees looking at the hire date and using SQL servers convert hire date to a date we want the time part of that date and making sure that it's not 0000. If it is something other than 0000, then it's going to fail, otherwise pass. And we have the count wrapper on the outside. Moving along to test case number 19, it's the opposite. 18 was make sure there's no time part. 19 is make sure there is a time part. Same thing, except instead of being unequal to 000, we're just making sure that it's equal to 000. Now, yeah, there's the slightest little bit of risk of a defect in case there really is a time that really is at exactly midnight. And if that's the case, yeah, it'd be a bug. But usually, this is a good enough test that unless you have hundreds of records a second coming through, then you wouldn't want to use this test. But if you have stuff that's during regular business hours and you just want to make sure that time is there, this, this test will work good for you. And moving along to the T20 multi-field compare. And again, I encourage you, I'm going through these kind of fast. You can go out to GitHub and download. That's what I'm looking at is this script right here. And you can copy these and paste it in your own SQL editor and run it and alter it and edit it. I encourage you to do so. Okay, a multi-field compare. What's going on here is a demo HR table, job history. There's a start and an end date. And we want to make sure that the start date is never uh, after the end date. So, of course, we're going to look for the opposite of that and say, hey, if the start date is after the end date or the same as, then pop a fail, else give a pass. And finally, a bonus tip on joining tables with two pairs of start and end date overlaps. So this is a really good tip I learned from a coworker in healthcare back in 2011. Don't remember who, but one of those folks. Anyway, the problem was that you're trying to join two tables with logic where the table one start date and end date overlaps the table two start date and end date. Classic example is table one might be membership and the member's insurance is based on their employment. And if they're employed from February 1st to October 31st, then we would want to join with another table, make sure that since their membership is February 1st to October 31st, we want to uh, only pull the records if this other table, whatever that might be, overlaps in some way. So the start date has to be between here or the end date has to be between here. And so as long as they overlap, we pull the data. And the solution is in your join clause, this syntax here, it's pretty simple. The table one start date has to be less than or equal to the table two end date. Table one versus table two, start versus end, and then vice versa. The table one end date has to be greater than or equal to the table two start date. And to visualize why this simple logic always works when you're looking for an overlap in a join clause, here's why. Six scenarios, can't quite fit them on screen. The first scenario is where table one's date range is completely before table two's. There's no overlap, you discard it, so the join works. Scenario number two, you include it because table one's end date right here is exactly on the start date of table two. So if they're both, if one ends at the same date that the other one starts, well, there's an overlap one day. And so it works. The logic works here because the table one end equals table two start. Scenario number three, and you can see the pattern. We're leaving this constant, table two's date, and we're taking table one and shifting it through all the combinations. So now we're on to scenario three, where the 
end date is nice and healthy, right in the middle. The end date of table one is right in the middle of the date range for table two. So of course there's overlap there. T uh, scenario number four, we've now shifted it so that table one's end date is outside of the range for table two, but its start date is still nice and healthy and right in the middle of table two's range. And scenario number five, now we've moved table one's date range right at the end. So the start of table one is right at the end of table two. And finally, scenario number six, we're going to discard it because table one date range is completely outside of table number two. So if you look at this and walk through it and see all the scenarios before, exactly on, in the middle of, in the middle of, exactly at the end of, and outside the range. That's why this logic works. And once you understand that, you don't have to think about the logic anymore. You just <laughs> plug it in and know that that overlap logic is going to work. Thank you for watching, and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also, check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.